Hi everybody, today I'm making a quick video about a NuGet package that I use all the time I created called datajuggler.net. One of the core benefits of this product is it has a bunch of tools to read the database schema. I realize datatier.net, which is an entity framework alternative you know, that uses all stored procedures, it appears it's only really interesting to me and eight other people followed it, but it doesn't seem to be everybody else. You know, I realize Entity Framework is Microsoft's recommended data access approach, but to me, a store procedure is just a better, you know, um, all-around approach and versus all the SQL that Entity Framework executes. That's a whole other story. And also, another thing I'm going to show in this video is a tool that I use all the time called DB Compare, which compares the schema of two databases and just a lot of times, like if I, if I manage the dev and the test server or the production server, I have to make sure the code and the database schema link up, which is one of the issues I'm running into with datatier.net. You know, I would post an update, and if anybody gets the latest version of the code but they don't know to update the SQL, then they're going to end up either getting an error or it's not going to work, and they're going to think datatier.net is a crappy product or something like that. So. I created this little function. I'll go ahead and uh, just show you a little bit of this. If you want to follow along, I created a little working demo just called Git Schema Hash. And all this does, by the way, Happy Halloween. It's October. It's still 95 in Houston, even though I saw it's been snowing you know, up in Montana, but I can't go north of I-10. That's a whole other story, though. So anyway, I want to show you this little program called Git Schema Hash. And I'll go ahead and just run it just to kind of, you can tell me if you think it's useful or not. But it's using a NuGet package. And I'll tell you how to get it set up here in a second. But I'm just going to run the little quick little program. Now, I have my connection. So I'm going to minimize PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. I've got the, see that says change to connection string? I'll go ahead and show you the quick way to fix that. Go to your app.config. And here I'm going to show you one of the free tools that come with datatier.net that hopefully you'll think is worth the price of free. But this is the uh, program called Connection String Builder, and it's in the Tools folder of datatier.net, which is my favorite product and why all these other tools exist. But some of the core components, or one of the main core components is datajuggler.net. So let's go ahead and just type in my database name, and I'll just use uh, datatier.net dot database I always forget the dot database and it wonder why my connection fails okay so now I have a connection string set so now I'm gonna go over here to my app.config and I'm just gonna paste this and you don't have to you can just erase this if you you know if you manage a zillion servers and it's easier to just type it in okay I'm gonna now run this okay so now my connection string is set and here's get schema hash now, you may or may not find this useful, but what this does is it reads your database schema and it creates a, uh, this basically, I add up all the, all the tables and all the fields. I get the field names and the database type and I put it into an integer, convert the integer into a string and then can encrypt the string into this little hash code. So it's not the, you know, but basically this number is going to be different. It may look really similar to a human, so if you make any like out of field, the, you may not notice the string changing a whole lot, but it will change based on any characters you add. So that's get schema hash, and I'll just copy that to my clipboard. And sorry, that little noise is turning my volume down. But just to go over here to Notepad, and I'll just paste in. That's what copied to your clipboard. Now the use cases of that could be, you know, if you have a either a web server somewhere you check for updates. Or in your app itself, if you want to make sure your code is expecting a certain version of your database, I can, you know, I find that to be pretty useful. I, I don't know, if you, if people, tell me what you do. I, I work alone a lot, so a lot of times it's like I'll invent something and somebody else will show me. It's like, oh, Microsoft's had that for 15 years. So, if if this is if there's some other built-in way that people are using, please let me know in the comments. But this is one of the uses of datajuggler.net. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you, if you ever want to add this to your own applications, just come over to whatever application you're using and say manage NuGet packages for solution. Now I already have it installed, but you would just type in datajuggler.net and install it to whatever app, you know, projects you want. Once you have the datajuggler.net, and there is a .NET Core version, and there, the, the .NET Core version is identical. As I mentioned, the Git server names is the only uh, difference. But here, 
you create an instance of a database and you're going to pass that in even though that's just the way db compare and datatier.net you load the database schema you pass in one but anyway you create an instance of sql database connector set the connection stream which i had already set this you know my little control here i set it but whatever way your app has the connection string set open the connection and just say connector .get database schema hash and all that does is it reads your database schema and it adds up your fields and your table names and your database types for each field and it concatenates into this large integer and turns the integer into a string so I'm not sure if there's probably some better ways or people may already have some use case that does that but I think it's pretty useful let me know what you think while I've got you here if you haven't left yet I'll just show you real quickly DB compare you may find this tool useful when I develop datatier.net, one of the problems I have if I change datatier.net.database, I can't use datatier.net to fix the problem, which sometimes I need it. So I keep a separate copy of the database, and I'll just show you right now my database is up to date. But if I were to put in a completely different database here, just uh, I'll do something just to show you something. Uh, let me go to stock AI. This will take just a second. It's a little bit longer database on the bottom one. So this is going to show you like a zillion schema differences, which is, you know, but while this is, I'll just, datatier.net, I mean, excuse me, this is all the ski, 242, it's what I thought. So I'll just to show you it does work, and I'll put that back to .database, which is the one I keep all my projects in, and I'll run it again. So that's datatier.net. Uh, I mean, that's a little program I wrote, datajuggler.net. It's the main engine of... Uh, datatier.net so okay, the target database failed to connect oh I just typed in database I didn't type in datatier.net most problems occur between keyboard and chair okay so now my scheme is up to date for this database so that is DB compare um, I'll put the link in the description it's also on my github slash data juggler where I've got about 20 projects if you're a SQL server or C sharp developer I, I find this tool here really useful just to make sure your your code and your database is linked up and maybe you let me know what you think of the little uh, get schema hash because I, I think I'm gonna add some features to datatier.net so I'm in the process of doing that's why I made this video just to kind of I'm gonna run the program and if you turn on I'm gonna make them you know turn it on by default but just say uh, check or I may just do it because it really does need you have to have the code and the database in sync or else you know problems are going to occur so uh, you know and also I was going to add a little functionality that says updates are available where I'm going to read the github github repo and if the commit hash is different than the one that is being ran then I know that an update is, and just warn the you know put like a little light bulb or notification or something that a new update is available all right, well, thanks for watching. This was a short video, but I, you know, let me know what you think of datajuggler.net. It is an open source NuGet package, and there is a data, there is a .NET Core version. The only difference is I do not yet know how to do get server names on a network because I believe the .NET Framework version uses the SMO, and maybe there's some updates to that, or some if anybody knows, if anybody's a .NET Core SQL guru and knows how to do it get these server names, let me know and I'll update the NuGet package. All right, thanks for watching.